Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. There are those out there who would say that Reaper's biggest strength is also its biggest weakness. The Reaper community thrives on the customization and flexibility options that Reaper has to offer. With some planning and a little bit of effort, you can turn Reaper into the perfect DAW for you and tailor the appearance and functions to suit your workflow. You may find yourself modifying Reaper on occasion to better suit your workflow for that point in time. We have the option of having multiple toolbars, either docked or floating, but I tend to keep a lot of the same tools in my primary toolbar. Today I'd like to show you what's in my toolbar. Let's take a look. If you don't already know this, Reaper has some powerful options for customizing your toolbars. If I right click a blank spot in the top toolbar, I have an option to switch toolbars. Here we see I can select and customize up to 16 main toolbars and 8 MIDI toolbars. We can also customize the toolbar in the MIDI Explorer. As you can also see in the list, I have my own toolbar, Mic Top Toolbar, docked at the top. I can also choose to open any of the other toolbars and I can dock them in various positions on the screen or have them floating. For example, my Group Visibility Toolbar, if I click that, it opens in the lower dock because that's where I last had it. I can right click this toolbar, go to Position Toolbar, then choose Floating, and I now have a floating toolbar that I can place wherever I would like. This particular one is one that I used to use to change the visibility of different groups. If I wanted to see only the drums, I could see those, and same thing with vocals and bass, or show all. As you can tell, I never quite finished this toolbar. Let's close this and take a look at what I've got in my primary toolbar. The first section of my toolbar controls my grid. I can choose 16th note triplets, 16th note standard, 8th note triplets, straight eighth notes, or quarter notes, half notes, or whole notes. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see that better. Here we've got 16th note triplets, and you can see the dividing lines are showing up there. Then there's my 16th straight, eighth notes, half notes, and whole notes. This can come in really handy if I'm trying to get things to snap to grid. Let's dig a bit deeper and take a look at how I created these toolbar buttons. I'll right click the toolbar and choose customize toolbar. In the Customize Menus and Toolbars dialog, we can see that I'm currently on my floating toolbar, Mic Top Toolbar. I can give it a new name if I'd like, but I like that name for now. And we can see my buttons that I have in order. If I click 16T, I can right-click this and select Change Action. And this brings up my Actions list. If I search in the filter for 16 Triplet, I see the action Grid set to 124th or 116th Triplet. That's the action that I'm currently using for my 16th note triplet grid. My next action is 16th note straight. If I change my filter and search for 116, we now see grid set to 116th. Essentially, you can take any action in the actions list and give it a toolbar button. The rest of these for the grid are self-explanatory. Basically, I could filter for grid and look for different grid options and assign any of those to the toolbar. Let's say, for example, I'd like to add another toolbar button for 30-second notes. I'll highlight 16T and then click Add. I'll search my filter for grid, or I could probably make that a little bit faster by instead searching for 132nd. Here I have an option grid set to 132nd. I'll select and close, and we can see now that I have a new button grid set to 132nd. If I press Apply, you can see I've got my new button there and of course it says grid 132nd. We can customize that toolbar button a bit further. If I right click that action, I can choose a text icon, which we've already got. Let's click that option. You see we also have an option for double width toolbar button. That comes in handy if you'd like to fit in a little bit more text. For example, if I choose double width and hit okay and apply, we now have a little bit larger button that contains the text a bit better. I think I'd like to set that back to single width and apply, and we're back to normal. Moving down the line, you see we've got a little bit of space between my last grid button and the next action. You can add separators between items by right-clicking the second item and choosing Insert Separator. I'll click Apply, and now you can see we've got a little bit of space between my quarter note action and my half note action. I'll remove that because I don't need that separation for now. Let's take a look at the next few actions. My next item is Move Time Selection Left by Time Selection Length. Let me show you this one in action. We'll zoom out a bit, and let's grab a time selection. You can see here I've got a time selection of 16 bars, and if I press my first option, 
Move time selection left by time selection length. My time selection has moved to the left by 16 bars. I use this frequently when drum editing. My second action goes to the right and does the same thing. Now at this distance, this can be a little bit difficult to work with precisely, so my next action is view zoom time selection. I can click this, and my time selection that was made by the previous action will zoom in to take up the horizontal width of the screen. As I mouse over this, you can see that it tells me the name of the action. This particular one, view time selection, is one that's built into Reaper. The other two before it are scripts that I install through Repack. Those are available from Lacassena. If you're not familiar with Repack, check the link above. Repack is a fantastic way to provide additional functions to Reaper to better suit your workflow. I can click on Extensions, Repack, and Browse Packages, and I'll search for Lacassena, if I can spell it, and you can see there are several scripts from Lacassena. This column on the left shows items that I have installed. You can see here I've got Create Folder to contain selected tracks. I've got a GUI library that's necessary for some of Lacassena's functions to work. Select tracks by name. And there's the two that I use in my toolbar. Move time selection left by time selection length and move time selection right by time selection length. I'll close out of Repack and let's get back to the toolbar. My next button after View Zoom Time Selection is View Zoom Out Project. When I press this, if this were an actual project, it would zoom out to show me the entire project. I'll open up a real project and let's take a look. Some of these plugins can take a moment to load. There. Now to see my buttons in action, let's make a time selection. And I'll click my View Zoom to Time Selection option. And now we're focused on my time selection. Now I can press the subsequent action, View Zoom Out Project, and that shows me my project from a top-level view. While there are key press and mouse modifier combinations to help you zoom around a project, I find that having these buttons up here makes things a little bit easier for me. My next two buttons are Fast Edit and Normal Edit, and these are custom actions that I use for drum editing. If you'd like to know more about drum editing and these two actions, check out my Drum Editing and Reaper course on ProMix Academy. These two buttons call combination actions that change mouse modifiers. Let's take a look. I'll go to Actions and Show Action List. And here you can see I've got a custom action, Fast Edit. I'll right click that and choose Edit. And I can see the actions that are tied to this one custom action. By right clicking Fast Edit, I arm this custom action which changes my mouse modifiers and allows me to split selected items at cursor with crossfade on the left it also disables snapping and sets the default mouse modifier action for the bottom half of the media item. If I left click and drag, it'll move the item contents. Basically that allows me to slip edit simply by moving my cursor over the bottom half of a media item. The other option is to set the default mouse modifier action for media item fade intersection left drag to move both fades ignoring snap. That allows me to move the cross fade that's created by the splits. You can do that normally by holding shift and left clicking and dragging over a crossfade, but this allows me to do it without having to also use the keyboard. Let's close this out and take a look at my second action, normal edit. I'll find that in my actions list here, and edit, and we can see the actions here. Essentially this just restores the normal function. This disables auto crossfade on split and sets my default mouse modifier actions for certain clicks on the media items back to their normal default. We'll close out of that, and let's take a look at the next items. My next button after my drum editing buttons is Remove Empty Takes. It does pretty much what it says. If you have multiple takes, this button will remove those takes. We'll go back into our customized toolbar option, and we can see the remaining buttons. After Remove Empty Takes, I have another separator, and then a Track Manager button. This button does what you would expect. I can click it to toggle the visibility of my Track Manager. The Track Manager offers a convenient way to navigate to different tracks, rename tracks, and also toggle visibility of various parameters on the tracks. If you'd like to know more about the Track Manager, click the link above. I'll click this button again to hide my Track Manager. And my next button is to glue items. This can be convenient if I have several contiguous media items that I would like to make into one. This action will render the selected items as a single WAV file. Next up, I have Envelope, Toggle Show All Active Envelopes for All Tracks. You can see here I have some volume automation envelopes, and if I click this button, this will hide them. I'll click it again, and my envelopes come back. Or envelopes, I never can decide how to say that word. 
I failed to mention this before, but my first few items are text-based, but after that I have a few graphical icons. You can customize the icons for each of these as well. Let's take for example my track manager. I can right-click that and choose Change Icon. That'll present me with a list of icons that are loaded into a particular folder in the Reaper file structure. You can use the filter to search for something that might fit. Like in this case, I can type the word envelope, and I have several icons that have the word envelope in their name. I chose this one that has a picture of what looks like an envelope with an eyeball, which makes the most sense for that particular button. Or does it? Actually, it looks like I'm looking at the track manager, but you get the idea. In my filter, let's take out envelope and type the word track. And we can see that I have several different things with the word track. As I mouse over each one, you may notice the description showing up under current. This one is toolbar MIDI track selection off, MIDI toolbar color track, toolbar color track, toolbar item selected move vertical track, tool track next, and tool track previous. You can find an icon that suits most use cases here, or you can create your own. Moving right along, my next option is Zanakios, or however you say that, SWS, Normalize Selected Takes to DB Value. I rarely use this option, but it can be handy when gain staging material that you didn't track yourself. I can use this and it'll allow me to type in a value to normalize tracks to the specified value. My next option is Split Crossfade. What this button does is toggle the function to automatically crossfade on split. Let's open the Actions List, Show Actions List, and I'll do a search for Split Crossfade. Here we can see Options Toggle Auto Crossfade on Split is currently on. If I run this action, you can see my button is now grayed out. I'll run it again, and it's toggled back on. So all that this button does is toggle the crossfade on split. Sometimes I like the crossfade and sometimes I don't, it just depends on what I'm editing. Up next is Take, Set Active Take to Default Color. This is one that's very helpful if you're comping across multiple takes. As you know, Reaper likes to make different takes different colors. Let's close the Customize Menus and Toolbars dialog and take a look at the vocals on this project. I'll scroll down a bit, and here's my vocals. We'll focus on this chorus, make that track larger, and zoom in a bit, and I'll press Ctrl L to show my take lanes, and as you can see, the different takes are various colors. If I draw a box around this performance, and then choose this button, set active take to default color, now I'll collapse, and all of my takes that are active are the same color as that track. This doesn't really change performance in any way, but the visualization can help me with organization sometimes. The consistency across the project just helps my eyes to settle a bit better. Let's try something. We'll zoom out to the entire project. Now I'll draw a box around all of my vocals here. And we'll use that same button. Now all of my vocals are the same color. And that just looks a lot tidier and is a bit easier on the eyes. I now know that all of these items are associated with these vocal tracks. Up next I have Note Off. By default this can be triggered just by pressing the F3 key on the keyboard, but I also like to have a button here. What this does is if you have a MIDI virtual instrument that wants to keep playing sound after you stop the transport, I can quickly press this button or F3 on the keyboard to stop the MIDI note from sounding. Up next is Regions Clock. This is one that I use a lot when tracking drums. This particular action is a custom script by XRAME. Click the link above to learn more about Regions Clock. If I click this button, it generates a clock of sorts that shows the current region and how long until that region is over. So as my playhead moves to different sections, I can see what section I'm on. My drums are across the room from my mixing desk, and if I'm recording myself, I can take this clock, put it on my second monitor, and blow it up to full screen, and it helps me to have a visual reference to where I am in the song. Up next is Monitor Mix. This is a button that I use to generate a cue bus for a headphone mix. This particular action is one that's provided by SWS Extensions, and this allows me to create a separate track that I can feed to a headphone mix independent of the master mix. If I wanted to track drums for this song, I could take my vocal bus, we'll move over to the left and grab the guitars bus, and grab the bass bus. With those three selected, I can click Monitor Mix, and this will create a pre-fader send from those tracks that I selected to a new track called Drum Monitor, and it will send it to Hardware Output 7 on my interface, which goes to the headphone amp behind my drums. I'll click Create Cue Bus. As you can see, this by default, after clicking that button, is not sending to the master, is only sending to my hardware output, 
and as I control these, it does not affect the master mix at all. You can make as many of these as you have hardware output, so if you'd like to create separate mixes for different performers, this is the way that you can do it. Click the link above to learn more about the Cubus generator. We'll close this and move on to my next one. This one simply says peaks, and all it does is clear the peaks. If you have tracks that are clipping, I can click this button to clear the peaks on all tracks that have clipped. I'll go to Actions, Action List, and search for Peak. Now that gives me a lot of options involving peak, so let's try to search a little bit deeper. Let's try clear peak. And this is the action that I'm using. View clear all peak indicators. As I said, this will clear the red peak indicators on all of your tracks in one shot. Up next is solo in front. This changes my default for solo to solo in front. For example, if I were to go to my bass track and solo it, this is the normal behavior for solo in Reaper. Let's unsolo that. I'll choose my solo in front button, and let's try the same thing again. So with solo in front, instead of it being an exclusive solo, I can still hear other elements for reference. There's another action that I like to use in conjunction with that. Let's go back to my actions list and search for solo in front. And you can see that I have another action that I've bound to control, alt, shift, and mouse wheel. That will adjust the solo in front dim level. That allows me to change the volume of all the other tracks that are not soloed without affecting the master. So if I play back the same track with solo in front engaged and I hold control, alt, shift, and move my mouse wheel, I can hear the volume of the other tracks change during the solo function. There is one caveat to this particular action. You do have to have your cursor over the arrange view for it to work. So let's close the actions list. I'll play that same bit of music again and I'll hold control, alt, shift, and adjust the mouse wheel. Check the link above for a video about Solo in Front featuring the Craftsman. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. I'll turn that off to go back to the exclusive solo mode. Next up is Effects Bypass. This is a quick way to bypass all effects on all tracks. We'll go back to our Actions list, Show Actions list, and search for Bypass Effects on All. The option that I use for that button is Track Toggle Effects Bypass on All Tracks. You can see that there are two other options. There's track bypass effects on all tracks and track unbypass effects on all tracks. For things like this, I try to use a single button that is a toggle. So in this case, if I wanted to hear this particular project without my effects, I can simply click this button and you can see effects have been turned off on all of my tracks. My final toolbar button is snap stretch. What this button does is take stretch markers in a media item and snaps it to the grid based on your grid setting. I recently did a video on guitar editing using stretch markers. Click the link above to learn a bit more about guitar editing and using stretch markers as well as the snap stretch option. And that's about it for my toolbar at the moment. I believe that I've got a pretty simple and straightforward workflow, but these few options that I do have help me to work even faster. What's in your toolbar? Now that you've seen this in action, are there some things that you'd like to add that may make your workflow even faster? Let's discuss. Leave a comment below and also join us on Discord to talk in real time. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee. For just a few cents a day, you can help me continue to enjoy tasty coffee. Patreon or Super Thanks link below. I've also added a list of items that I use in my studio into the description below. Full disclosure, the links associated with those items below are for an affiliate account, and I do receive a small amount from anything that you'd like to buy from those links. We'll see you next time.